All perfect praise is due to Allah who prolonged our lives enough to fast Ramadan and to pray Qiyam during Ramadan. Ramadan, a dear guest, a precious bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal who departed and left people in different situations. The most important question after the departure and the end of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is did we fulfill the objective of Ramadan? Perhaps they would attain taqwa. Did we give Ramadan its due right? Did we do what we were supposed to do? That remains to be known on the Day of Judgment. But people with regards to Ramadan are divided into three different categories. The first category are those who were actually upon obedience and worship before the advent of Ramadan. And when Ramadan came, they utilized that opportunity to the optimum. They took advantage of this chance and this season. They exposed themselves to the mercy of Allah. They enhanced their performance. They increased the types and the quantity of the acts of worship and obedience to Allah and exerted more and more and more effort and therefore by the end of Ramadan they were deserving to be higher in rank with Allah and to be amongst those who were deserving to be saved and free from the fire of hell. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma amin. Yet at the opposite end, you have another category. It is those who started Ramadan and finished Ramadan with nothing changing in their lives. Ramadan for them is just another month of the year. Nothing changed if it didn't become worse and they performed different types of sins and committed other mistakes and increased. You see, the, the, the virtue of the time makes sinning in it worse than outside that time. Now about these, the Prophet ﷺ said, as reported by Al Imam Al Tirmidhi and classified as authentic by Al Albani and narrated by Abu Huraira. He وسلم, said, May Allah Azza wa Jal humble the man, humiliate him. In Arabic, it says, Rahima Anfu. Meaning to rub his nose in dust. A sign of humility. May Allah humiliate and humble the man who Ramadan begins and ends while he was not forgiven by Allah. Ramadan did nothing to him. These people are utter losers. They are the losers. And to them I say, the chance is still there. Repentance is still open. The opportunity to turn to Allah in repentance sincerely is not yet finished until you're about to die. And that's when it's too late. So the chance is still there. But they must work hard on themselves. 
to change their state, to change their situation, to change their style, and turn themselves into better Muslims. The last category represents the majority of the Muslims. It is those who were heedless, sinned before Ramadan. But as soon as Ramadan started, they worked very hard. They strove very hard to please Allah. They fasted, they prayed Qiyam, they recited Quran, they spent charity, they attended as much as possible study circles and learned as much as they possibly could. They shed tears when they prayed. They supplicated Allah, confessed to their sins, and, ha and asked His pardon. They lived a beautiful, beautiful month. They felt as if they're flying in air. But the problem is, as soon as the first day of Shawwal started, things started to go back to the old state. Some of them very fast, and some of them gradually faded away from that beautiful spiritual state they enjoyed. They were blessed with by Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Muslim, narrated by Abdullah ibn Sarjas. May Allah be pleased with him. He said the Prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge in Allah from, and he mentioned one of them. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hawri ba'd al kawr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from deviation after guidance. <laughs> to go back to the old situation of negligence is certainly turning from something good to something evil. If we are really keen and honest and sincere about maintaining that state which we enjoyed in Ramadan, then we have to strive very hard and ask Allah Azza wa Jal practically asking Allah and not just merely by the tongue to maintain ourselves on that state because Allah Azza wa Jal says ذَلِكَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُمْ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not change the bounty which he bestowed upon a people until they change themselves, until they change their state. The minute this happens, then you're subjecting yourselves to be alone without the support of Allah. If you give up, Allah will forsake you and leave you to handle your situation on your own. If you strive hard, ask Him, and He sees sincerity in you, and action, and performance, He will not forsake you. He will not forsake you. He will help you out. He will be there for you. He will support you. We should not go back to that old state. We should not demolish the structure we worked very hard for a full month building. That would be foolish. And Allah gave an example in the Quran for that. Imagine a woman who's spinning woolen clothes for a full month 
until she finishes it and then she starts untwisting the threads. We call that foolishness, don't we? Well, Allah gave this as an example for those who retreat in faith. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَبَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ And do not be like her who untwisted the threads after she spun it strong. We should not go back. We should not allow ourselves to go back to that state and give up the bounty which Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon us during the month of Ramadan. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us steadfast and firm on faith until we meet him. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi Mustafa wa ba'd. Do not be like her who untwisted the threads after she spun it strong. How can one work hard after his record of bad deeds have been cleansed and cleared and reset to zero to fill it up again with sins? How can anyone who was saved and freed from the fire of hell, work towards it. We need to know that this is the act of shaitan. We all know that shaitan is our enemy because Allah says that in the Quran. Inna shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan is, is an enemy for you. So take him as an enemy. Don't deal with him as a friend. Don't allow him to whisper and allow yourself to immediately give in. Shaitan is going to work very hard. See, the scope of the project of Shaitan is to make us all go to hell with him. And his action plan for this is to make us sin as much as he possibly can make us sin. Allah Azza wa Jal protected us from the devil for a full month. So we build up a good record in our record of good deeds. We enriched it with acts of obedience. And now he is enraged. He will strive very hard from day one in Shawwal to make you, number one, lose the spirit. Lose the sweet spirit we enjoyed during Ramadan. And will strive very hard to make you retreat and go back to the state you were in before Ramadan. Why? Because he saw that the hard work he's done, him and his soldiers, for a full year, all went to waste. Because in Ramadan, Allah forgives sins. He frees people and saves them from fire. So he worked hard for this. And in this one month, all of his work went down the drain. It's fruitless. So he wants now to go back. He is adamant on making you go back. He is firm on achieving his goal. So we should not allow him to do that. Yes, I know the question that some will ask. How can one maintain himself on the same state after Ramadan as he was in Ramadan? When Ramadan was a special season, indeed it was. And indeed it is. What you can do in Ramadan, what is facilitated for you in Ramadan is not facilitated 
before and after. This is true. For different reasons we spoke about in different khutbas. But at least work hard to maintain the type or the types of worship, the acts of worship you had performed, not necessarily the quantity, not necessarily the same quantity. Qiyamul Layl, for example. Yes, we can perform Qiyamul Layl. We can pray at night. We prayed a full month, non-stop. As a matter of fact, the last 10 nights were exceptionally busy. Some people hardly slept during these last 10 nights. Though they have families, jobs, businesses, the same situation before and after Ramadan existed in Ramadan. But they, they, saw, they found themselves string, zeal to worship Allah. So they forced themselves they strove hard and succeeded in praying every night and increased that duration during the last 10 nights. So the least we can do after Ramadan is to pray at night. Not necessarily the same period. Not necessarily the same number of rak'ahs. But at least do it. At least 20, 30 minutes before Fajr, every day. If you can't, then every other day, minimum, if it's very difficult, if it becomes very hard, on the weekends where you have no commitment to go to a job or to business. Let's not give it all up. Though we can't do it all the same way as we did in Ramadan. Fasting. We fasted. And it's summer. Many of us thought it is going to be very difficult to fast because it's a hot summer. Heat and humidity, but we did it. Allah helped us and we did it. And if we work hard to do it as optional fast after Ramadan, Allah will help us. Because Allah promised to help those who strive to obey Him and please Him. Now the opportunity of fasting the six days of Shawwal, as we all know, which will count with the fast of Ramadan, as if one has fasted the entire year. After that, let's try to fast every Monday and Thursday as the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Or at least, as in the narration of Abu Hurairah, at least fast the middle three days of every month if we can't do every Monday and Thursday. Quran, the words of Allah, this beautiful book that soothes the heart. Many of us recited the entire book in Ramadan and some of us recited it more than once. Let's not desert it now after Ramadan finishes or has finished. Let's not put it on the shelf until the next year. Let's have a deal with ourselves to recite a portion of the Quran. Let's not give this up. Beautiful words said by one of the scholars he said, I reflected upon the saying of Allah. He has known that some of you will be ill and others will strike in the land. Meaning travel, seeking the bounty of Allah, meaning provision through business and trade. And yet others fight for the sake of Allah. Then he said, indeed our Lord 
You knew their situation. You knew how weak they were, how preoccupied they were. So what is your instruction to them? What is your command to them? With this be in their situation, ill, traveling, fighting for your sake? He says, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ So recite as much as you possibly can from it, referring to the Qur'an. <coughs> Astonishing, isn't it? When you're traveling, you're allowed to break your fast in Ramadan, shorten the prayers and combine them. When you're ill, you're allowed to combine the prayers in certain situations. When people are fighting for the sake of Allah, the entire shape of the prayer changes. But the one thing that remains as an instruction, don't give up the words of Allah. Don't desert the words of Allah. Recite the words of Allah in all situations, even in these situations. Subhanallah, one might ask, I have a wife, I have children, I have a job or a business, I have relatives, I have other commitments, I hardly find time, truly, and sincerely I have no time. By the time I finish all of this, in addition to other commitments, and then naturally WhatsApp and Facebook. By the time I finish all of that, I have no energy nor time to recite the Quran. It's a shame. It is really a shame how we manage to find time for everything that was just mentioned. And when it comes to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, we say, no time, no energy. We have time to chat on WhatsApp and other means of communication. For hours, some people chat while driving. Some people chat in the bathroom. Some people chat in every situation they're in. And they manage to have time to comment on everything they receive on Facebook. Share and forward them. But when it comes to the book of Allah, they don't have time. They have to pl time to play games. But when it comes to the, word, the words of Allah, they have no time. The fact of the matter is, brothers, is that we do not lack time. We lack commitment. We lack determination. When we have these two, when we become committed and determined not to make a single day pass without reciting a portion of the Qur'an, we will certainly find the time for it. It's just a lack of commitment on our side. Brothers and sisters, let's build up on what we have accumulated over the month of Ramadan. Let's work hard not to lose the profit we gained in Ramadan. Let's try to maintain ourselves as close as possible to the state we were in during Ramadan. Though, as I said, it not, might not be the same quantity or duration, but at least let's be committed to do. And trust me, when Allah sees sincerity in the heart, He will help.
He will enable. He will bless. He will put barakah. You will see the barakah in your time. You will see how you are able to do things you thought undoable. Not possible. But that's when you were working in the worldly scale. But when the scale becomes the scale of Allah, things change. Things are different. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to maintain the good deeds we performed in Ramadan and to maintain ourselves upon the state Allah Azza wa Jal enabled us to reach during the month of Ramadan and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who succeeded in Ramadan who were accepted in Ramadan who were saved from the fire of hell in Ramadan Allahumma Ameen Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna